Okay, we're moving on with our subject of money. I hope you've enjoyed the first one and I hope you're going to enjoy this next one even more because we're going to show you today how money became paper. As we mentioned before, coins, money, real money has a value because of the metal in the coin. So if it was a gold coin, it's worth the same even if it's melted down. Um, English sovereigns. Now, those are, there's a thing. Um, maybe if some of you are older, will um, have relatives who've saved a sovereign somewhere and passed it on. Uh, they're worth a lot more money now. So a sovereign was really a pound, but you'll find because it's a real gold sovereign that they're worth a lot more money than the one pound that, that they were originally worth. It's called a sovereign because it was named after whoever was the king. And of course, even today on our coins in the UK, we have the queen's head because she is the sovereign. In, I don't know whether it's her money, but the, the, the idea is that the sovereign has their imprint on the coin. Funnily enough, that goes right back to Roman times. So the Roman Caesars had their heads put on coins. Um, it's, a, it's a sort of establishment of authority. So a sovereign is called a sovereign because the king or queen's head is on it. And of course, if it was a gold one, it was worth a lot of money. This particular sovereign was sold for £516,000. And the reason it was sold for that much money is because the king's head that you can see there was the king that abdicated in 1936. Um, so the coin had already been made, but not many were made. And the ones that were, were sold for such a huge amount of money. So that was really because it's a very rare coin, of course. Um, and he abdicated and didn't be, stay as the king. And I'm sure you can see some films all about that historical point. But anyway, we're talking about sovereigns and a sovereign. Um, gold coin, if you can find one, it's probably worth a lot more than a pound. So, as we said originally, a pound worth of pound, when Britain and America and other countries were in what was called the gold system, in other words, the paper money was valued against gold held in the vaults in the Bank of England. And you could go to the bank and ask them, I want my pounds worth of gold, and they would give you gold in exchange for your pound. You can't do that anymore, so don't try it. But the paper was worth what a gold was selling at that time. Now, how did paper money start? Well, here's an interesting one. Of course, originally, after shells and after barter, there was gold and gold was used all around the world as a medium of exchange. So you held gold and you traded with gold, gold coins, but even gold bars. The difficulty was that what do you do to keep your gold safe? Well, in those days, going back, the only people that had safes were gold merchants or jewellers, people who worked in the jewellery quarter of the various cities. They had a safe. They knew that it was important to keep their goods safe. And so they would rent out space in their safe to others who wanted to keep their gold safe. So they, you would go along, this is before banks, of course. Um, really what happened is that the gold merchants became the bankers. But what happened is you'd go along to the bank, to the gold merchant and say, I've got this much gold. I'm very afraid that it'll get stolen. Could I put it in your safe? And the gold merchant would allow you to put your gold in his safe and he would give you a receipt for that gold. And he would charge you a little bit of money for protecting your gold. But you had a receipt for your gold. And if you wanted your gold back, you just went back with your receipt and he would give you the gold back. 
And that's how banks really started. But then the gold merchants, they had some of their own gold, but now they've got lots more gold because they've got your gold as well, or whoever put it into the safe. They started to lend gold to others for trading purposes. But carrying gold around was quite a dangerous thing. So eventually what happened is that they would give to you a receipt. Can you see where we're going with this? This is the first beginnings of paper money. So the receipt worth, I don't know, £10,000 worth of gold became your money. So when you went to buy something, you wouldn't just give the people the gold because you didn't have it. It's back in the safe. You would actually lend or give to the person you were purchasing whatever you were purchasing, maybe a field, maybe a cow. You'd give them a receipt and you would say, if you go to the gold merchants in London and take this receipt, he will give you my gold, which is in his safe. Now, eventually, strange thing happened. The gold merchants discovered something. They discovered that lots of people wanted to use their saves and that people were not coming back to collect their gold because having bought the cow with the receipt, the person who sold the cow would then go perhaps and buy a field for more cows, but he'd used the gold merchant's receipt rather than go back to the bank or to the gold merchant and collect the gold. It was easier to pass on a piece of paper. And also, it was a lot safer. You didn't get robbed for a piece of paper in the same way that you'd get robbed for a bag of gold. So people didn't want to carry gold around. There was always the chance that somebody was going to clobber you and take your gold. Pieces of paper were much easier to work with. So wherever they were going, they got the gold merchants pieces of paper and people gradually began to accept these pieces of paper as an assurance that the gold was back in London in a safe or back in Amsterdam in a safe. And if they needed the gold, all they had to do was to take it along and collect their gold. It's because the receipt bore the fact that this gold existed. But then something really interesting began to happen because what the gold merchants discovered was that because the receipts were so useful, not only did they lend people's gold, actually, funnily enough, the gold that they were lending wasn't even theirs very often, but they started to lend people money or gold to do their transactions. But they discovered that people were happy if they just wrote them a receipt. So they didn't even need to take the gold out the safe. They just wrote the receipt and said, yes, I'm lending you so much gold and here it is. And a really interesting thing happened then because, in fact, they were lending receipts for gold that did not exist. So they were lending more receipts than there was gold in the safe. That's interesting, isn't it? And one day, of course, somebody comes along and says, um, this is a great system. Let me uh, become a lender. Because I've discovered that people are very happy to take my receipts, even though there, is no, that, there isn't that much gold in my safe. Um, maybe the, this invention was more interesting than Christi Christopher Columbus's experience in discovering America. The gold merchants then would lend receipts to people for gold that did not exist at a charge of interest. So can you see how the gold merchant is making money now? He's lending you a piece of paper for gold that he says is in his safe, which it isn't. And you are being charged for keeping that gold, which isn't there, safe. <laughs> it's a good system, isn't it, really, from the gold merchant's point of view. And, of course, if you don't pay him back, 
the amount that, that has been loaned to you, well, he gets the right maybe to take your farm or your house because you haven't paid him. You can see how the gold merchants became very, very rich people. And you can see how they eventually become the bankers. The gold merchants had discovered that less than one in 10 persons ever collected the gold that they deposited with them. In other words, people would put the gold in the safe, take the receipts, the receipts would become the currency or the pound notes or the paper money, and they never ever came back for the gold because the receipts were circulating, which is why they realised we can lend these receipts even though there's no, no gold there because nobody ever comes back for the gold. Well, 10%. That's a nice risk. It was a great way of making money. A eureka moment, almost. So, gold merchants not only became protectors of gold in their saves, they became money lenders or receipt lenders. Same thing, really. And they started to make lots and lots of money. They refined the idea. You can read that there about that saint who was a great engraver but a good righteous man. <laughs> I'm not so sure as the, the gold merchants were always that righteous. To lend gold which does not belong to me at interest, better still, my dear master, instead of the gold I will lend a receipt and demand payment of interest in gold. That gold will be mine, and my client's gold will remain in my vaults to back up any new loans. It's a great idea. Somebody said that goldsmiths kept the secret to themselves because it was so important they didn't even tell their wives. And they began to advertise the fact that gold could be lent. So paper money was invented, and it moved about while people did their business, traded, went from one place to another, and the gold in the safe stayed untouched, unmoved, without increase. This is actually leading us somewhere else, which we're going to talk about. You can see how the goldsmith becomes very rich. Because when the person who didn't pay him back had bought something, that whatever he'd bought became his. So now we're talking about interest, how much interest rates. So when you borrow money, you pay interest on it. People were borrowing the goldsmith's receipt, even though there was no gold to back it up, and they're paying interest on the receipt. And they're passing the piece of paper onto others to purchase things, fields, cows, cattle, food, whatever. And the receipts are actually becoming part of the circulation, the, the medium of exchange, which we mentioned in our first lecture. This is becoming the paper money system. So they put money into circulation, haven't they? I think the goldsmiths, perhaps the first time that they did it, were perhaps quite nervous about what had actually happened. Oh dear, I'm lending a receipt and there isn't any gold there. It didn't take them long, though, to discover that only these 10% of people ever came back for their gold. So the goldsmith could play the game quite safely. People already trusted him, which is what money is when you think about it. Money is about trust. You trust that piece of paper to do what it says it will do, to, to actually buy you the goods, to exchange things, to go into a shop and give them a piece of paper and get what you want. And they, they're very happy to take your piece of paper, aren't they? So that confidence existed in the goldsmiths. And of course, 
like we've just talked about, if you borrowed money from the goldsmith or you borrowed his pieces of paper and you didn't pay him back, whatever you'd bought might become his. The first ever paper money was actually found and discovered in China around 740 BC. That's a long time ago. So the Chinese had a big advantage of using paper money and they were using it long before we were in Europe. Marco Polo visited China and it, the, it's, it's an amusing story because he came back to the UK and he was laughing because people in those days were always trying to invent a way of making gold because gold was very valuable. If you, you know, you've got all sorts of stories about people trying to mix things together to make gold. And Marco Polo laughed because he said the Chinese have actually succeeded before anybody else. They've turned paper into gold because it became the medium exchange. You understand the story, don't you? But when he came back, the story goes that he went to one of the courts in Europe with the paper money and he showed them the paper money to the courtiers and to the king. I think it might have been in Spain. And... He showed them that this particular money that he'd found in China and the fact that the Chinese had already got this going long before Europe had. What happened was apparently that the courtiers and the people that he was showing the paper money to thought this was really funny. And they took his paper money off him and in front of him they began to burn the paper money. And apparently Marco Polo was really upset. They did not understand in Europe that this paper was worth anything. You'd be upset, wouldn't you, if you took your five pound note and gave it to somebody and they just burnt it. Poor old Marco Polo. This is the story of how we first start to get two things. Number one, paper money. Number two, the idea of loaning th money and number three which we're going to talk about in another lecture the whole idea of interest and how fiat currency remember that word again how that becomes something really strange in our current banking system have a good day